the angel of the Lord said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Messiah, the Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful and loving God, you have made this night holy by the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the humble trust of his mother Mary. Help us to enter with joy into the celebration of this night, and may we rejoice continually because you have made us your adopted daughters and sons, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayers for the world. Dear people of God, on this Christmas Eve, let it be our delight to hear once more the message of the angels and go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and take, take to heart the scripture story of God's loving purposes to redeem and reconcile all things that we might live in harmony with God, within ourselves, with our neighbors, and with all creation. And let us fill this church with glad sounds of our carol singing. But first, let us pray for the needs of God's whole world, for peace and justice throughout the earth, for the unity and mission of the church, and especially for God's church in our country and in our communities. Please feel free to say, offer your prayers out loud. We'll take a few moments for that right now. Pray for peace in Ukraine. And because our merciful God particularly loves them, let us remember in God's name those who are poor and helpless, those who are cold and hungry, those who are oppressed, those who are sick and those who mourn, those who are lonely and unloved, the aged, the little children, as well as those who do not know they are loved by the Lord Jesus. Again, Say your intentions out loud. For my sister Jean. For those that are having trouble, especially in Buffalo right now, and places where the snow is so deep and people can't be as lucky to get to church as we are. Finally, let us remember that whole multitudes of people which no one can number, whose hope was in the Lord Jesus Christ, who now live on another shore in another light, with whom we are one forevermore. Here mention anyone that you know or have that has died and is no longer with us. Jim O'Neill. May Almighty God bless us with grace. May Christ give us the joys of everlasting life. And may the King of Angels bring us all to the fellowship of the citizens of heaven. Amen. 
Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to this year's St. James Skitty Atlas Christmas Pageant. Alex, I feel like this past year went by so fast, and it's Christmas time already. I hear you, Nora. And to be honest, things out in the world are a bit scary. There is a lot of arguing and crazy. I need a pick-me-up. Me too. Good thing we have a fun pageant coming up. I have been looking forward to this. Hopefully, this pageant will take our minds off all the holiday stress. Yep, adults need to remember to find hope and joy in this season. Then this pageant is perfect. This is the story of Jesus' birth. It is a story of hope for the world. What are we waiting for? Let's go. And now, the Saints James Saints in Training present the Birth of Hope Christmas pageant. Long ago, there was once a young woman named Mary who was engaged to a man named Joseph. She lived in a place called Nazareth. One day, an angel sent by God appeared out of nowhere. Mary was surprised and a little bit scared. 
and the angel stood in her house, all shining and holy. This angel's name was Gabriel. He told Mary that God had a special job for her. He said she would have a baby, a baby who would be God's son. Mary asked how on earth could that happen? She was supposed to marry Joseph. The angel said God would make everything happen. Mary had to have faith that it would all be okay. Mary told the angel she loved God and would do whatever he had planned. Mary was very brave. Joseph was a builder. He was all set to marry Mary from Nazareth. Then she told him she was pregnant and going to have God's baby. Joseph thought this was crazy. One night Joseph was sleeping and an angel came to tell and told him in a dream that he needed to stay with Mary. Joseph had to help Mary have a special baby who will save the world. Joseph woke up and told Mary he would still marry her and they would stick together and raise God's son. Angels we have heard on high singing sweetly Computers and people had to be counted the old-fashioned way. There was a leader called Caesar Augustus. He said everyone had to go back to the town where they were from to be counted so he could be sure he got his tax money. So this made everyone have to travel back to the cities where they were born. By now, Mary was very pregnant. She was pretty big. Mary and Joseph had to go to Bethlehem. It was hot and it was a long trip. They didn't have much money or food. They brought a donkey to help with their trip. They didn't have cars or trains or planes. Mary and Joseph walked and walked and walked. It was nighttime when Mary and Joseph finally made it to Bethlehem. They were tired. Mary needed to rest. Because there were so many people traveling, all the places to stay were full. Mary and Joseph went house to house. Angry people said, no room, no, you can't stay here. Try somewhere else. We're full. Mary and Joseph came to the last inn in the town. The innkeeper said the inn was full. He felt sorry for Mary and Joseph. They looked tired and Mary was going to have a baby. The innkeeper said that they could use his barn out in the back. The tired couple made their way to where the animals were kept and where animals eat and, you know. Mary and Joseph were thankful for a safe place to rest. This place didn't have a bed or air conditioning or even cable. This manger is where Mary had her baby. They called him Jesus. Jesus is God's son. He started as a baby just like you and me. Mary and Joseph loved Jesus. 
The animals surrounding him loved Jesus. God changed the whole world when baby Jesus was born. It all happened like the many prophets had said, and a bright star shone in the sky right above Jesus in the manger. Oh, maybe not so nearby, there were some shepherds watching their flock of sheep at night. That is their job to protect and guard their sheep from animals and things that would hurt them. All of a sudden, angels appeared in front of them. They were scared. One angel said, don't be afraid. I have good news to tell you. It is wonderful, joyous news for all people. The angel told the shepherds that in Bethlehem, that the Savior was born and the shepherds should go and see the baby. The shepherds would find him wrapped snugly and sleeping in a manger. Then the angels were so happy and sang songs, saying glory to God in heaven and peace on earth. shepherds decided to go right away to see this baby. They were so excited they left to see Jesus, who was just a small baby. They walked to Bethlehem and found Mary Joseph and the baby Jesus in the manger, just like the angels had told them. It was true. God's son was born. That manger must have been very crowded. Animals, shepherds, angels, and the Holy Family. Jesus was born to bring hope and God's love to the world. The humble shepherds knew this was important. And they went back to their families and friends and told them all of the special baby born on this day. His name is Jesus and he is the son of God. Well, everyone, that is our pageant for this year. We hope you enjoyed it. Each year we grow and change, but this, this is a good time of year to remember that Jesus always stays the same. That's right. We celebrate Jesus' birthday every year to help us remember what he gave the world. God gave us Jesus because he loves us so much. And because Jesus was born, there is a lot of hope and good in the world even today. Are you sure, Alex? Absolutely. I feel like we're forgetting something. Everyone be like the shepherds and go tell it on the mountain. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Go tell it on the
Lord be always with you. Yeah, right, right. Please be seated. Thank you all for coming to uh, be here this afternoon. You could spend this afternoon anywhere and you chose to spend it here and it is just such a delight for all of us uh, to be gathered together. I want to especially thank those who have worked so hard to make this night incredibly beautiful. Uh, Laura Pesesnik, Laura, I think you should stand and let people thank you. <laughs> Laura, Laura wrote the pageant, directed the pageant, corralled the kids, and uh, made all of that joy happen that we just saw on the screen. Michael Larkin here, who was the video producer. And all the parents and the children, oh my goodness, that was just wonderful. Thank you so much. I also, uh, you have in your hands uh, the, the list of uh, donations for flowers that are what is beautifying this space tonight. And thank you all who donated. Uh, we are just really appreciative of your generosity. There is also... A, uh, the weekly, the newsletter that is a special Christmas edition that is on the welcome tables on the way out. And what it has is a sneak preview of much of the programming that we have coming up early in the year. So I invite you to take a copy of that with you on your way out the door. We do have uh, two more worship services this evening, 6.30 with the band and 9.30 with organ and choir with special music starting at 9. You're welcome to come back for any of those or 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. We will also be here on Christmas Day uh, with Christmas carols and Eucharist. And that is always a lovely, quiet way to start the Christmas morning if you're out of bed. Next Sunday, a week from tomorrow, is New Year's Day, and we have um, a really special day planned for that as well. Worship at 7.30 and again at 10, which is uh, a different kind of a different schedule for us, followed by brunch in the parish hall that is being hosted by our vestry. And so we do invite you to uh, come back for that if you are able. And we come now uh, to the time of communion when you're invited to receive. All of those who are present here are welcome to come forward. We um, will have bread and wine. If you choose to receive wine, we ask that you drink directly from the cup in accordance with diocesan guidelines. And I just want to share with you that um, this evening we are dedicating new silver cruets for the wine and the water that have been given in memory of Sue and Joe Spaulding, who are longtime and beloved members of this parish. And it's um, just a great delight to be able to use that silver for the first time this evening. We invite you now simply to um, sit quietly in your seats as we prepare the table.
I just uh, want to thank the Bova family who were the greeters at the door and are our ushers this evening and have just given such a wonderful welcome to all the people who have come through these doors. So thank you all very much. And thank you, Lord, for the generosity of your people who have given these gifts and ask that you would multiply them, Lord, and spread them abroad across the earth in a way that will bring blessing to others. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to have to go back and take that class again. How to, how to wear technology in church. I'm going to encourage you to stay seated because I think uh, this, it might be challenging for the parents with small children to have to stand for this part of the service, but you are certainly welcome to do whatever is most comfortable for you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, loving God, for you did not stand far off, but came in nearness with the tenderness of love. We praise you for the word made flesh, born of Mary, cradled in her arms, greeted by her song. The fullness of God dwells in his flesh, a touch of welcome for the outcast, good news of bread for the hungry and poor, a shepherd to find those who are lost. And so we gladly thank you, joining our voices with angels, saints and angels, we now say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we bring you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of your Son by means of this holy bread and cup. We show forth the sacrifice of his death and proclaim his resurrection until he comes again. Gather us by this Holy Communion into one body in your Son, Jesus Christ. Make us a living sacrifice of praise by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. 
And I just realized that I usually um, do a better job of explaining what's going to happen next. The ushers who are on the outside will give you the opportunity to leave the pew. And the, the folks on the side, if you'd walk up the back and come in two lines up the center, we'll have bread and wine that you can receive. If you um, choose to receive, we ask that you would put your hands like this in front of you to receive the bread. You don't need to receive wine, but you can if you would like to, and we'd ask you to drink directly from the cup. We have gluten-free and what my family calls gluten-full. Um, and simply ask if you need the gluten-free. And everyone is welcome. It is our tradition um, at this church that if you are present here, you are invited to take part in this feast. And if for whatever reason you would prefer not to receive, we still ask you to take part in the ritual by getting up and walking in the line, and you can just indicate that you don't want to receive by crossing your hands across your heart. Chuck and I would be very blessed to be able to say a brief prayer for you. But whoever you are, and wherever you may be on your journey in faith, you are invited to the Lord's table this night.
Let us pray. Please join me. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of the Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. By way of Bethlehem, lead us, O Lord, to newness of life. By the innocence of the Christ child, renew our simple trust. By the tenderness of Mary, deliver us from cruelty and hardness of heart. By the patience of Joseph, save us from all rash judgment and ill-tempered action. By the shepherd's watch, open our eyes to the signs of your coming. By the shining of a star, guide our feet into the way of peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. And please stand for the closing hymn. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>